Hi everyone, Code Queen Nayeli. Video number two, wish list, part two. <laughs> so some of you have already seen part one. If you haven't, uh, look for it on YouTube, look at the playlist, uh, go watch the wish list number one so you can kind of get an idea of how to set up your entire website. This will be a quick overview of the different pieces that you're going to need in order to complete the wish list, and I will uh, show you what the code will look like in different pages and point out the different pieces of the code that need to be replaced. I will give you the code in a link down in the description. It will possibly link to my totallycodable.com website where you should be able to access a copy of this entire uh, wish list template site. So let's get started. So here's the tutorial site. I am going to put a link in the description so you can access the site and check it out with me. This is the home page. And on here, I put a login button, so make sure that your website has a login button so members can log in, and your database basically knows who's online at that time making the wish list happen. So I'm going to log in, and now that I'm logged in, I can see my name here. I'm going to go to the menu up at the top. I'm going to view my wish list to see if there's anything in there already. So there is <laughs> actually. Um, a list on this page for me. Um, apparently I tested this out before this video, <laughs> making sure it works. So I have test item one, two, and three. What I'm going to do now is, well, basically remove them from my wish list. I don't need them anymore, or I don't want them on this list anymore. So let's go to view items. This view items is a regular page. It has a table, and it has the login button just in case. Um, this table is connected to the collection of all the items. So in this case, I only have three test items. If I hover over any of those, it'll direct me to the items dynamic page. And in this page is where it has one button that does the adding and removing of the wish list. So when I click this button that says remove from wish list, now it says add to wish list. This is test item three. Let's go to my wish list and make sure that it was removed. Ah, it's gone. <laughs> so now I only have one and two left. Let's remove number one. Let's go back to view items. Click on item one. Click on remove from wish list. Now let's go check the wish list. And there you go. It's been removed. So, do you want to know how I did it? Well, I didn't do it by myself. And I will reveal who helped me at the end of this video. <laughs> so, let's go to the editor. Um, this is the home page of the tutorial site. On this page, let me open up the code at the bottom. There's no code. Um, I didn't do anything special on here. I just added a, a login button, the member login from the Wix at Market. You can just look for it there. Let's go to the wish list. Notice that the wish list is just a regular page. So create a regular page on your site and you get to design it however you want. In this page, I am actually featuring the repeaters. This is the coolest invention um, by the Wix code developers. It's just the neatest thing ever. I'll do another video on, on repeaters later. But um, this repeater is connected to my database, and this is where all of the items are displayed uh, that I added to my wish list. And the code is here. I will give that code to you later, as promised. And this code is, is not that long actually, but it does perform a query on the database uh, looking for all the items that you've actually added and um, it searches the user. So that's why you have to be logged in. 
So the only parts of this code that you're going to be editing or changing is on this line 13 uh, wish list. That's the name of my database, if you can see it over here. So whatever your database name is, this is where you're going to change it. Then uh, more down here on line 31, uh, it says hashtag favorites and then dot set filter. Well, this is actually the name of your data set. So let me put this down. My data set is called hashtag favorites. So on my code, that's what it says. Let's put this up again. And then on line 32, where it says dot has some, you see this word that says name. Well, you're going to change that part of the code as well. Name is actually a field that's inside of my uh, data set, which is the favorites data set. My favorites data set is actually connected to my items data collection. So it's not connected to the wish list. The wish list is the actual wish list and the items is the items list of all the products that I have so people can add to their favorites. So in the items database, if I look under name for the test item, this is what we're searching for. So under manage properties, you're gonna get the field key and in this case, mine is name. That's why in my code, going back, I have the word name. Okay, so two databases and uh, you should review wish list part one so you can understand a little bit more about why that is. <laughs> and the next page we have is the view items page. This is where we list all the items and notice that there's no code. On that page, I just have a simple table and that's it. It's connected to a data set. So connect it to a table or a gallery or whatever you like, and that way people can click on that item and it'll be directed to the dynamic page for that item. So of course the last page that I'm going to go over is that dynamic page for the item. So this is very simple. It has an image, a title, a description, and then one button. You only need one button for this code to work. The code down here uh, performs a function uh, with this button. So on the properties panel, make sure that you activate the on click. You can name the button whatever you like, whatever the ID that you name it. Here's the ID. Just click on the plus sign, press enter on your keyboard and it'll save the name. You can literally put whatever words you want in here. All these words will do is it will tell the code on the bottom of your page um, look for that button with this code because it's going to do this thing. And well, here's the thing that it's going to do. This is the entire code. This is a little bit longer. This is, this is where all the thinking happens. <laughs> so uh, on here, you're going to change a few things. At the very top, on line number nine, um, it says hashtag item details. Well, this is my data set. So whatever you mean your data set, this is mine, hashtag item details. That's what you're gonna put on that code line, on line number nine. On 10, it says hashtag text 31. This is gonna be the product name. All it's doing is saying that this, whatever this is connected to, this is actually the name of the product. So, the product name is going to be used somewhere over here. You're going to see the word product name down there because it'll be performing the query for that one. Um, so when the user is logged in um, and they are logged in, it's going to search again the data set on line 17, item details, and it's going to perform a function, the test wish, wish function, <laughs> tongue twister, <laughs> and the test wish function <laughs> is down here. It's going to perform a query on the wish list uh, database that I have, which is this one, because when a user clicks on that button that says save to wish list, it adds an entry inside of that wish list. 
Uh, so what it's doing is it's searching the wish list for that specific product. This is the product ID. And for that user ID, for the actual person that um, is doing the clicking to save the, the product <laughs> on the database. And then if the results are zero, if it finds nothing in there, then it's going to perform this function. That button that we called hashtag add to wish list, which is line 35, it's going to be the label will read add to wish list if it found zero in that list. But if it did find something, then the label is going to say remove from wish list. So um, over here, do the wish function. It's another function that it's going to perform. Um, it's going to perform another query in the wish list database. So line 44 is the name of your database where you have the wish list uh, being saved. Then again, it's the product ID, then the user ID. The user ID does not need to be changed. Um, it's going to search to see if it finds zero. Um, if it does find zero, then it's going to save the product with that specific name for that specific person. So that's what line 54 and 55 is saying. Then um, line 57, did I say 57 before? Oh well. <laughs> um, line 57, it's going to save into Wix data into the wish list. And then the label of the button, this is your button's name, line 58, hashtag add to wish list. Make sure to put your button's name on there. It will change the label again to remove from wish list. And then, um, so if it, if it didn't find zero, um, it's, well, it'll be backwards. <laughs> Does that make sense? Then instead of dot save, uh, it'll say Wix data dot remove because it'll remove it from that database, which is wishlist database. And the label of the button, which is again, line 61, that says hashtag add to wishlist. It will change to add to wishlist. So confusing, yeah. But you know what? You don't need to know what it means. <laughs> Just go back, uh, review the video, and change each line that I told you to, and you'll be fine. Um, then at the very end, on click, it'll do the actual uh, wish function. So make sure all of this is copied. Again, I will give you the link to the code. And, and that's it. That is how you perform the wish list function with adding and removing from the wish list and not duplicating any items. How cool is that? I know, right? So now that we're done explaining that, uh, let me quickly show you something uh, where you're going to find the code. This is where I'm going to send the link to. Um, totallycodable.com. Uh, it's slowly filling up. You're going to see code snippets and templates. Uh, there's going to be some free ones, so make sure to check out the website. You will be able to see the wishlist code on this website. Wait for the link. I will put it down below, I promise. And this totally codable um, logo right here was made by <laughs> Matt Lowe Design. And this is that website. So if you want to contact them for a, an amazing, clean, beautiful, one-of-a-kind logo, this is who you need to contact. And the magic for the code happened because of this person. So visit futurevisionweb.com slash future code. Um, really amazing designer, Wix expert, yeah, that could show you a thing or two about code. Uh, trust me, I know firsthand. Also, if you happen to notice, there was an intro video, and in that intro video, um, the audio was made by EliteOnTheBeat.com. So check them out. Tell them thank you. I know I already did. I totally love it. And um, the video itself was made by another Wix expert designer, uh, Robert Hamilton. 
I don't have the link to show you at the moment, but I promise I will add it down below in case you want to say thank you or if you want to say hello to him too. That's it. I hope you learned how to um, do the wish list. And don't forget to check out my Facebook group. If you go to totallycodable.com, let me move this. Go to the very top corner, click on the join the community, and it'll send you straight to the Facebook group. That's it. No more for today. See you next time. Bye.